Hey, what's up? Let's do some math today. In this video, we're going to talk about solving multi-step equations. Now, when it comes to multi-step equations, we have three big things that we're going to be kind of looking at, three general types of equations. We have combined like terms, variables on both sides, and distributing. So let's just jump straight in. Um, now, the big thing we got to remember, though, is that solving multi-step equations, it's no different than solving a good old classic two-step equation. So 2x plus 3 is equal to 5. The process remains the same. Things just look a little bit different. And so what we want to do is work our way to getting to making these multi-step equations two-step equations, and then one-step equations, and then we got it in the back. So let's take a look at what we have here for our first example. This first one is all about combining like terms. So here we have 5x, negative 2x. Um, on the same side of the equation. So our first step is to combine these to get 3x plus 4 is equal to 28. Now we've made this look like a two-step equation, okay? So next step would be to subtract 4 from both sides, and we have 3x is equal to 24. Keep on simplifying by dividing by well, both sides by 3, so 3 here, 3 there, and x ends up equaling... Eight. Now notice how I kind of have this funnel of work. Like that's one thing I really want to stress is that you kind of keep a narrative of your work as you keep going here. So here, I first step I combined, then I uh, kind of went down and then I did my uh, inverse operations by subtracting four from both sides, then dividing by three. Sometimes I see students putting their work all over the place and then they end up getting a little bit confused about what it is they have done and what they still need to do. All right, next one. You know what, this is actually the same problem, but what I've done is I've switched it up a little bit to kind of show you that again, what we're doing here is just an extra step to a two-step equation. So the only difference here is I've put this two X on the right-hand side. So when we have variables on both sides, our goal is to get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. Now you could go with either way. You could put the variables on the left, variables on the right, um, I like to try to keep things positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2x. It's going to um, to both sides. When I do that, I get rid of all these x's on that side. And so now I'm looking at 3x plus 4 is equal to 28. And again, that's the goal. I want to make this to a two-step equation. I repeat the process, subtract 4 from both sides. And so now I have 3x is equal to 24, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 8. So big takeaway here is to make sure that you put variables on one side, numbers on the other side. All right, next, let's take a look at the distributive property. Now, what I have got going on here is writing these problems down twice because I want to make a point. When you see something like this, we have two options. Option one is we can distribute in and then take it from there. Option two is to take a look at what we have and maybe avoid distributing altogether. And that's what I'm going to suggest for this one, that I'm going to divide by four because 20 is a nice multiple of four. When I do that, this four and this four cancel each other out and we're left with just 2x minus one is equal to five. Again, we've now converted this to a real nice uh, two-step uh, equation problem. So add one to both sides. We'll have 2x is equal to 6, divide by 2, divide by 2. We have x equals 3. Now, if you went the longer way, or you distributed, you'd get the exact same answer. It's just that the numbers would be bigger when you're doing your division and addition and subtraction. Totally fine, though. Now, to contrast that, let's take a look at this problem. Here... I can't really divide by 4 because 21 isn't a nice multiple of 4. So when this is the case, we have to bite the bullet, and we just have to distribute. So we distribute. You want to be careful and make sure you distribute to both terms correctly. So uh, here we have 8x minus 4. Oftentimes, many students will forget about this number and leave it as it is there, and then be especially careful if there's a negative sign here. Um, that is a classic mistake where people uh, forget to uh, multiply the negative times the negative. However, we don't have that in this problem, so it, we're, we've done it correctly so far. And now this is equal to 21. And now we just repeat our process. Add 4 to both sides. 
we have 8x is equal to 25. Divide by 8, divide by 8. And here's what's cool. This would be a pain to divide and to like kind of figure out if we want to get a decimal equivalent. You know what I'd say? Just leave it like that. 25 over 8. There's no reason why you can't say that. It's totally fine. Now, as we progress and we go into more and more complex equations, rarely are we going to get nice, clean answers like x equals 3. Okay? We're going to get more complicated answers like fractions. Totally fine. Just let it be a fraction. All right, finally, I wanted to show you a different look to this. So these are actually the same problem. All right? So if I put one-third, the fraction might seem a little bit kind of weird uh, and whatnot, but it's actually not that big of a deal. Okay? Uh, we just treat it like a normal number. So again, we have two options. Here, I don't like five and one-third playing together. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. And when I multiply both sides by 3, this goes away. And I just have 5x minus 2 is equal to 18. Add 2 to both sides. Add 2 to both sides. 5x is equal to 20. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. x equals 4. We can box it. Walk away. Here, it's more apparent that like maybe the first step should be to multiply both sides by 3. Again, this is the same way of looking at it. Another point I want to make here is that if you want to, you could distribute this 3 as a division to both of these. So if we wanted to, we could say this is 5 over 3x minus 2 over 3x is equal to 6. Because in that case, we definitely didn't multiply by 3. Let me put that fraction bar back there. We definitely didn't multiply by 3. And even if you have this with fractions, the process remains the same. You would add the fraction to both sides, and you just have to make sure you get a common denominator. And so 6 could be rewritten as 18 over 3, and then we have 5 over 3x is equal to, and then since these have the same denominators, 3 will be down there, and then 18 plus 2 is 20, and the final step would be to multiply by the reciprocal, 3 fifths, 3 fifths, and then all this cancels out, so you just are left with x equals. These threes cancel out, and then the 20 and the 5 become 4 and 1, and there we go. That's it. So, um, that's how we do these multi-step equations. The big thing I want to stress is that the process doesn't really change from two-step equations. It's just that we have to do a little extra work, okay? So good luck on your practice, and let me know if you have any questions.